second one yesterday saw Rishi Sunak in the lead, but perhaps by not as much as he had hoped. And Penny Mordaunt, uh, not even in the cabinet, uh, racing into second place above Liz Truss, the current foreign secretary. Uh, Kemi Badnock, Tom Tugendhat and Swella Brevman uh, bringing up the rear. Expect that one of those, possibly two, could be dropping out after round two today. We'll get the result of that vote at three o'clock. Uh, well, with all of the momentum going with Penny Mordaunt, let's talk to our next guest, Lord Frost. David Frost is a former Brexit uh, chief negotiator and he's a cap was a cabinet office minister resigning from the government last December. Good morning to you, Lord Frost. Morning. Great to um, be here. We've, we've had lots and lots of resignations re recently. You were probably the first to say I'm resigning because of the way the government is going, speaking out, uh, including with interviews mm. with me about um, unhappiness. Um, just first of all, I mean, do you think it's the right thing that Boris Johnson has gone? I think it is in the end. I'm extremely sad about it. It's, it's a tragedy in many ways in the correct sense of the term. A, a great man brought down by flaws, but I'm afraid the point we got to was that he, he had to, to move on and so it's right that we're in a, a leadership campaign. Well, he's still in number 10 right now, but on the 5th of September we're going to find out who the new Tory leader is. Most of us don't have a vote. Are you a Tory party member? Do you get to have a I vote? Am, I am, You yes, are um, a, a, a Tory peer, I suppose you'd have to be. Um, you never know these days, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, the archbishops in the Church of England don't believe in God, so I mean, you know. Um, um, and, um, and who are you backing? So I'm not yet ready to say exactly who I'm backing. Have you it's made a, a decision good, yourself? Uh, I'm, I'm looking very closely at what the candidates say. What I'm looking for is somebody f where I can be confident that Brexit is safe in their hands, where they're generating the level of economic change that's needed and where they will fight the, the, the push back in the, the cultural wars and the needs in the ways it needs to be and done. And those were all issues that you raised after, well, and in, in, in your resignation letter, the Prime Minister also issues about lockdown as well. Yeah, and absolutely. People are still calling for for more restrictions Absolutely. even now. Um, in terms of Rishi Sunak, he's the front runner, I mean, bounced back uh, after those revelations about his wife's tax affairs. Um, do you think he'd make a good Prime Minister? So you would have dealt with him an awful lot in government. I did. Um, Rishi's a very serious guy, obviously, that's, that's very, very clear. And there's no doubt he could do the job very, very well, like a number of the other candidates. Whether he is yet offering the scale of economic change, reform, change of direction, that I think is needed. I'm not yet sure about... You think the, the break with the, the old regime? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we need to do things differently. We can't just have continuity with the past. The country needs to reform, it needs to change, it needs to do things differently if we're to make a success of Brexit and get investment coming in here and be successful. And uh, I'm not, I wonder whether I'm quite hearing that yet, but, but there's time to go, yeah. Um, and Penny Morden, the resurging candidate, front page of most of the newspapers today, Day, um, not only coming second, beating the current Foreign Secretary Liz Truss into third place uh, by a long way, by 17 votes, but also uh, the, we had a, a con home poll earlier the week and a YouGov poll yesterday uh, saying that basically if she's in a runoff, if she's in the final two with Tory party members who get the final say, uh, she will beat all the other candidates, hands down, including Rishi Sunak. I say you've worked in Cabinet with Rishi Sunak. Penny Morden has not been in the Cabinet, uh, uh, which was in the past as Defence Secretary briefly in International Development Secretary, but you have worked with Penny Morden. What do you make of her as a potential Prime Minister? Yeah, so I have worked with, with, with Penny. I'm, to be honest, I'm quite surprised that she is where she is in this leadership race. Um, she was my deputy. Uh, notionally more than really, I think, in the um, the uh, the Brexit talks last year. When you say notionally more than really, what do you mean? So, I I mean, she, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, that I felt she did not master the detail that was necessary in the negotiations last year. Um, she wouldn't always deliver tough messages to the European Union when we, when we, when that was necessary. And I'm afraid she, um, she wasn't f sort of fully accountable she wasn't always visible sometimes I didn't even know where she she was and I'm afraid this became such a problem that after six months I had to ask the Prime Minister to move her on and find somebody else uh, to support me. You have to remember this was a time when we were in a, a major conf confrontation over Northern Ireland. It was extremely difficult and I'm afraid we just were not getting the... And the Prime Minister agreed needed. to move her on? Uh, yes, uh, he Are did. you saying that in your view as Penny Morden, as your junior at this time, Penny, Penny Morden was not up to the job at that low level. That, Do you then therefore think she'd be up to the job of being Prime Minister? That was my view. I'm, I'm afraid if you're a Prime Minister, you've got to take responsibility, you've got to be able to run the machine, you've got to be able to take 
tough decisions deliver tough messages. Anybody can be photoed in a video with I vow to thee my country, but it's what you do in practice. Are you able to be tough? Are you able to lead? Are you able to take responsibility? And that I'm talking only about my own experience with her, uh, but from the basis of what I saw, I'm afraid I would have grave reservations about that. Um, do you believe that Brexit would be safe in her hands? Well, uh, if Brexit is going to be safe, it's going to need a few things, but one of them is the need to be, is the ability to be tough, to be clear, to deliver tough messages, to stand up for the decisions that we have taken as a country and make success of them and not be pushed back into some sort of closer relationship. And, and I would worry, uh, on the basis of what I've seen, that um, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily get that from Penny. I, I mean, to be clear, I think a, a lot of people have very kindly said to me they hope I might come back I was going to, to come on to that. And um, well, that's obviously a, a decision for the next Prime Minister. Now, but, this, this but... is down to me. You're a Tory peer after leaving the job as a negotiator um, and you're in the Cabinet, but you're not an MP, therefore not eligible MP. for it. But there were a couple of, quite a few seats coming up for by-elections and you were being out of some, it was understood that it was blocked by number 10, uh, partly because you were seen as too big a threat. So that's not true. Um, I know there were rumours about that. Uh, that's that's not true at all. And in fact, the Prime Minister was was supportive of the idea to me. Um, but of course, as I was, you can be a minister without being an MP. And I mean, to be clear, I, I would not feel able to serve in a ministerial team under Penny Mordaunt. That's how strongly I feel about that. So I felt I have to make this clear today. MPs are voting today and I think they need to know the facts. Not only MPs but also party members. You feel that, I mean, looking at the momentum here and this, this poll that suggests that if Penny is, uh, Milton is in the final two, that she would be able to beat Rishi Sunak and you haven't you, know, you haven't put, you've gone behind Rishi Sunak or any other candidate, you've made that clear. Um, but, but you think that members could be about to make a very bad decision? That would be my view if she's in the in the final two. I'm sorry to say it. She has a lot of skills. She's an extremely good communicator. That's that's clear. She but but being prime minister is is more than that. And the party has made wrong choices in in recent years. And I want to make sure we make the right one this time. So I had to make my views clear. Okay. Um. And and in terms of say the culture issues that you talked about. I mean, say Brexit is an issue. Economic change and 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 what policies we're going to be looking at for dealing with that. Um. And culture issues. I mean, just on the economic change, um, cost of living is the single biggest crisis right now. It's 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 going to be the thing that loses the Tories the next election if anything is going to do that. Which of the candidates do you think has got a serious message on that? Because surely it does come down to if you're still going to go for net zero in 2050, you are not going to tackle the cost of living crisis or indeed our, 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 I suppose our security when it comes to energy which is a crucial part of our, our physical military defence as well. Yeah absolutely I think we are rushing at net zero too fast um, I'm not convinced it can be done on the timetable we've set we're rushing into using technologies that don't work particularly well I think if we're going to deal with the cost of living crisis and of course energy is the biggest part but it's not the only part mm. we need reform and change we need to get taxes down taxes are the biggest part of most people's income even if they're uh, spend, yeah. expenditure, even if they don't realise it, it's that scale of change that we're going to need uh, to to help mm. people through this. And in terms of the the culture wars, I mean, you know, I, I I care an awful lot whether someone thinks that a woman can have a penis or not because I think it's a sign of whether someone is either dishonest or insane. I, I, I genuinely think I, it's that it's that clear. Um, uh, what about I mean, going back to Penny Mordaunt, who you've had uh, grave reservations, you say about um, she has said in the past trans women are women, and then she's sort of saying now some people calling it backtracking she's just clarifying mm. about how you know biological women and what who can be legally called a woman under trans uh, tr self-identity etc etc um, do you think that she is the right person to fight the culture wars right now so I mean and this is this is an area where you've got to you know stand up for what you think uh, she uh, I think has been very clearly on one side of this this argument and now she's trying to give the impression that actually it wasn't quite like that well that matter to most Tory party members who are worried I, about taxes and the energy bills? I think honesty, I think clarity, I think taking a position and sticking to it and defending it and not accommodating yourself mm. to, to everyone else is yeah. what we're going to need.
Um, I would have thought, if you say you're not coming out for any candidate at the moment, but I would have thought the likes of someone like Suella Breverman, Kemi Badnock or Liz Truss, very much on your side in terms of Brexit, um, and, and certainly um, Kemi Badnock and Liz Truss um, uh, on, on, in terms of net zero and questioning whether or not that is a policy you want to be going for, and in terms of tax, um, they would be the sort of candidates you might be looking at? So all three of those candidates in different ways... Uh, they focused on different things, but all three of them, I think, saying very interesting things, mm -hmm. things that the country needs to hear. And um, I, uh, I'll, I'll certainly be taking that very seriously when I think about where we're going, and I'll say something soon on that subject. OK, um, Lord Frost, really appreciate you joining us, former Brexit chief negotiator, of course, now a Conservative peer. Uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us in the studio. Thank Quick you. word from uh, Peter Cardwell, our political editor, on that. Gr uh, Lord Frost saying he has grave reservations about the, well, now person considered to be the front runner. Not missing and hitting the wall there. This is a very serious and very significant intervention by a senior figure in the Conservative Party who a lot of people will be listening to this morning. My phone is already lighting up with journalists saying, how can I get the clip? This is <laughs> very, very significant. Lord Frost being very clear that when he worked with uh, Penny Morden, he wasn't impressed. Um, and, in, and in terms of how that might go down with uh, party members... Oh. I think they'll listen to him. I think they'll listen to him. I think this could be uh, I, this could change the weather in terms of the uh, in terms of the uh, leadership election today. It's interesting. The polls are open at uh, one thirty. There's going no, to be no eleven thirty. Sorry, eleven thirty. Yeah. There's going to be uh, hustings at ten o'clock today as well. So this is this will be what people are okay. talking about this morning. Peter Carwell, thank you very much again. Big thanks to Lord Frost as well joining us here on a talk at breakfast. Uh, coming up, we're going to be talking to more uh, supporters for the big runners and riders. Also, talk to our favourite Professor Carl Hennigan about the latest on COVID. World Health Organisation still pushing masks. New Zealand going into more restrictions. This is Talk Breakfast.